Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, new uh, new session uh, uh, presented by Joanne Mas Um So uh, Joanne is uh, is application engineer uh, at Data Advance, and he will present on behalf of the Manitou uh, company. Um, so before that, let me uh, just uh, give you some background information about uh, about Joanne. He graduated from. Uh, Polytechnic University of Catalonia uh, and Superaero in France uh, with a degree in aerospace uh, engineering. Uh, he then completed a PhD in multidisciplinary optimization applied to aircraft design at Onera and Superaero. Uh, at the beginning of 2020, he joined that advance as, uh, as an application engineer for the uh, optimization software P7. So the title of his presentation today is called Automatic Generation of Stability Charts for Telehandler Vehicles. Uh, Joanne, uh, the, the floor is yours. Yep, so uh, thank you, Laurent, for the introduction. Yes, yeah, so I will share my screen now and start the presentation. Okay, so please let me know once you can see correctly the presentation. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So yeah, let's start. Um, yeah, so this is about the automatic generation of stability charts for uh, telehandler vehicles, but we will get into more detail about what we understand as stability and what type of vehicles these are. So yeah, this is uh, an activity which was performed uh, by that advance, but uh, in collaboration and for the needs of uh, Manitou which is a French uh, company. Uh, so I will first describe brief introduction to this company. Uh, what is this static stability problem and uh, what is the need of Manitou regarding this problem? Then we will formalize the statement of this type of problems. See what is the current approach to treat this type of problems. What are the particular needs of Manitou that, that make them look for a different solution or a new approach? Then we will uh, describe the approach that we have taken for this project. We will see that there are two big parts. First is how we get uh, the physical information or the physical model that we use to get the, the stability boundaries. And then we will see a second part, which is separated from the first one, which is how we actually build automatically these diagrams. Okay. Uh, more details for the methodology. In this case, we will choose a nonlinear finite element model for the forces of the model. Then how we automate all that in P7, how we automatically make the finite element setup and then how we actually build these diagrams. So this, uh, this uh, last part is the one which is really detached, detached from the first one, but uh, both are, are linked. Brief introduction about Manitou. So Manitou is a French company that started in 1945 with the creation of uh, concrete mixers and cranes. Then uh, in 1958, they built the first prototype of a forklift truck. Then they started their international expansion, uh, starting in the United Kingdom. Then, and that's important for the topic of today, in 1981, they started uh, their first. So here you will see very often the name telehandler. So it's also the same as telescopic uh, handling vehicle. Uh, yeah, so today Manitou has uh, 4,500 people employed around the world, mainly in Europe, but also Americas, uh, Asia Pacific and the Middle East. So they produce a very broad range of products. Uh, so today we'll be focusing on this type here, so telehandlers or also similar to this uh, type here but uh, they produce many other products such as uh, other types of telehandlers, uh, also ex uh, small excavators, which are not displayed here, but uh, they are also included in the range. So let's go straight to the topic of today, which is this static stability problem. So uh, in this case, we will talk about uh, static stability when this telehandler vehicle uh, carries some load, okay? 
So first you can imagine by applying some simple uh, force equilibrium aesthetics as you did in school or university. Uh, so yeah, at first glance, it can seem very obvious because uh, you have these, let's say, yeah, longitudinal distance of the load with respect to the um, to the front of the vehicle and then you can simply apply an equilibrium of uh, moments and get and get uh, this maximum distance for its different load okay so if it was like that that would be very easy it would be only these vertical lines that you have here so here just for reference that would be the front of the vehicle here and here we have the coordinates of the extremity of the telescopic arm Okay, and then here on this diagram, you see for each level of mass, how far and how, how high you can go without uh, actually starting to tilt uh, yeah, uh, and lose your, your static equilibrium. So the problem, uh, but you will see we have more complex phenomena, like here, it's not simply this vertical line, there are also these uh, lines here, which are actually limited by the height and you can uh, wonder how is this limited by the height. So simply, for example, when the vehicle is uh, in a sideways position, so it has a lateral uh, inclination, we will see that on the next slide, uh, height uh, is also a limiting, um, a limiting factor for this, uh, for this type of loads. So the problem that Manitou has in this uh, regard is that for the default uh, attachment, here, for example, here it's a fork. They can, of course, produce this diagram for the default attachment experimentally by testing the setup in the limit position. But the problem is that there are many, many, actually a huge variety of attachments for which these diagrams have to be provided. So uh, they simply want to avoid building this diagram experimentally for each different variety. So they are looking for a new methodology to do that more or less automatically. So this is simply to resume the three types of conditions under which static stability has to be uh, tested at least, at least there could be others, but these are the, the very minimum. So of course, when the vehicle is downhill, it will be more unstable than this one because the projection of the vertical uh, force of this load will be, let's say, um, will be farther at the front of the vehicle as if it was uh, simply horizontal. But the difference with that, because we could think that simply this case is necessary, is that here there are some internal uh, safety factors which could make this case worse than this one if we include these safety factors. So this has also to be uh, considered. And this one simply illustrates the fact that um, well, this is not pure uh, sideways, there's a uh, composition between both, but when we have a sideways slope, the effect of height also creates a sideways, sideways projection of the load, which uh, could create uh, a lack of equilibrium on the lateral direction. So, well, we have already done an introduction to that, so that's the same diagram as before. So just uh, for more clarity here. Uh, and you can see here the three types of limits that you can have. It's actually a little bit small, but you have a perfectly vertical line, which is actually the longitudinal case. You have a slight slope line, which is um, the longitudinal case with some downhill slope. And then you have this other line here, which is the limitation of the sideways slope uh, which mainly limits the, the maximum height that you can reach for a given load. So that's a good example because we have all different types of problems included in a single diagram. So as we were saying, for the classical method, currently what it's done is that for each type uh, of vehicle plus uh, attachment, uh, this is done experimentally. So not all the, let's say, possible combinations are tested explicitly, but there are some uh, known points uh, that actually limit all the stability envelope. So we are know that uh, when we are inside of the region determined by these points, let's say we are on the safety uh, region. So, but the problem 
well, of course, uh, immediate advantage is that we cannot do better than reality itself. So actually testing that uh, for static stability, uh, well, actually uh, during the test, the vehicle is loaded, uh, then the arm is extended in these different positions, and the point is determined when uh, at least uh, two wheels start losing contact with the ground. So that's uh, the, the limit of the stability. Well, of course, this advantage is that since it's ex experimental, it requires both the infrastructure and the human time to operate this vehicle. Uh, yeah, so of course, an advantage to would be to automatize that uh, both for the infrastructure as well as the, the time required. So to solve this, uh, this challenge, in this case, we proposed uh, an approach. So as I was saying here, this presentation has two uh, different parts. They are linked, but they are clearly different. So the first is how do we obtain, if it's not experimentally, how do we obtain, let's say, an estimation or a prediction of the reaction forces that exist between the vehicle and the ground? Because actually, we said that when the vehicle starts losing contact with the ground, it's the limit of the stability. So we need to estimate uh, the contact force between the vehicle and the ground. And when this force approaches zero, it means it starts losing contact. So yeah, first we need a way to, uh, to estimate that. This can be done in very several, in, in very different ways. First is, for example, simple equilibrium equations. We will see the limitations that they have when we consider rigid bodies. We can also uh, include uh, finite element models and, and other tools, as we will see here. And then a uh, uh, second part of the presentation is, regardless of the methodology that we use to obtain these contact forces between vehicle and the ground, how do we, in fact, build this diagram in an automated, uh, systematic way? And that, that will be the second one in which, of course, we will use the method proposed here for the forces, but we could imagine uh, substituting uh, another tool that provides the forces. Uh, yeah, we'll go a little bit first here. So uh, yeah, in this case, we decided to use a finite element model, which is nonlinear to illustrate some of the phenomena that cannot be reproduced uh, with the rigid body approach. So here we have a model of the vehicle. The, the main, uh, say, to correctly obtain the forces uh, between the, the vehicle and the ground. So we simulated the tires as springs, okay. Uh, and the other source of flexibility is also the telescopic uh, arm. So in this case, we use uh, beam elements okay, that simulate the flexibility of the arm. And what I wanted to show simply here, it's why do we need a nonlinear analysis in this case? Because if we took the rigid body approach, well, this illustration is of course exaggerated, but it's simply to see what happens. If we took the solid, uh, the rigid body approach, these lines would be perfectly vertical because the projection of this force is independent of the, let's say, the deflection of the tires because they would be represented as rigid. But when we include the deformation of the tires, we see that we have some extra inclination which is induced by this uh, flexibility here. So the equilibrium state does not depend on the, let's say, the geometry and the load itself, but the geometry, uh, the load, and the level of deformation of the of the system. That's why we have more restriction here for um, when we have a higher uh, height, because actually we, this height and this extra inclination uh, creates an effective uh, longer uh, arm. Okay. In practice. How do we integrate that in P7 for all the load cases? So horizontal, downhill, and uh, sideways slope. So we can automate all that. So we have actually a single finite element model, which is parameterized. So in this case, we use uh, Calculix, which uses the same syntax as Abacus, just for reference. Yeah, we'll go a little bit uh, fast on that because we're running out of time otherwise. Uh, yeah, so we automate all that 
uh, with the text program text block. And here we simply handle the uh, automation of the input file of the finite element uh, according to the one of these uh, three conditions uh, and the geometry of the vehicle. So to do that, uh, to proceed, we create an approximation model which takes as inputs the geometry of the telescopic arm and the position of the, of the mass. That allows us to build an approximation of the critical force for the, for the equilibrium state that we will further use for the search of these stability boundaries. Then, and that's the second part of the presentation in which uh, we have this uh, automation of the creation of the, of the plots. So actually, what we provide here as a source of this critical force as a function of the geometry and the load uh, is not necessarily this nonlinear finite element model. It could be results, experimental results, uh, more complex models, uh, whatever, so that we can connect here. So then in this case, we uh, use the DSE block again, not for design of experiment, but uh, for uh, to search with a constraint uh, search the points that satisfy this condition of zero uh, value of the critical force. This will provide uh, a very uh, large quantity of points that satisfy this condition that allows us to reconstruct the stability boundary. So actually what we do here, once we get the results of this design of, of experiment, is that we collect all the points for all conditions for all different mass uh, loads. That's why we have different colors here and different inclinations of these lines. Um, and then the intersection between the stability according to each criterion, so actually the, the, the sum of all these uh, different conditions, the more restrictive condition, will give us the effective uh, stability region for each mass uh, level. Uh, that allows us to automatically draw the diagram. So here in this case, we simply use the monitoring of uh, image files in P7 uh, that allows us to include these uh, automatically created reports as part of the project database and further in the results uh, analysis section. Yeah, I'm a little overboard on time. We'll quickly read the, the conclusion. So as we have seen, main advantage is this is automatic. With this particular study, we have seen that it's possible to easily include the flexibility effects to be more realistic than other purely uh, theoretical rigid body models that were used previously at Manitou. Of course, it reduces complexity and cost compared to the experimental testing. And by using the center of gravity of the equivalent attachment, uh, we can quickly explore different combinations of, uh, of attachments. As we were saying, the second workflow, so the search of boundary stabilities, uh, it's completely independent from the first one. And as a source of data, we can use several ones to build this uh, automatic search. We can use either theoretical models as we have used, or even models that use uh, at the same time experimental data plus theoretical data, for example, using uh, data fusion. And just as by the nature of uh, P7, we can include the monitoring of these uh, reports as part of the workflow results, and then we can further reuse them in the, in the um, analysis uh, section. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's uh, all about the presentation. I hope it fitted into schedule. Let me know if there are any, any questions on that. Thanks a lot, uh, Juan. That's uh, definitely an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, let's uh, I jump uh, into the question and answers panel. Um, so, first question Could the FEA's black box be replaced by any other one, like multibody kinematics analysis model? I believe that this is something yes, that yes. you already this mentioned. Yes, yes, this question was yeah. more or less covered, but uh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, simply to remind. So yeah, this part here, actually it's the same, the first workflow. So yeah, in this case, uh, we use this uh, 
block here, the program block, which is uh, this nonlinear finite element solver. But for the next stages, or even for the creation of this approximation model that we use uh, in the following stages, here we could have simply replaced uh, any other model. The only important thing is that it provides the critical force, so the force on the critical wheel, as a function of the geometry and the load of the of the vehicle. So uh, yeah, of course that would depend on the complexity of this tool, but uh, it could be uh, replaced here. Okay, clear. Okay. Um, second one, could you explain why there are two uh, design space exploration blocks in the stability uh, boundary search workroom? Ah, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the second part. Uh, I would like to clarify on that. That's the second part of the project. So yeah, here, um, yeah, you might wonder why we have two blocks here. So this one, which uh, I would call the main one, is the one that searches uh, all these combinations of values here. So mainly, you see a radius, angle, mass, uh, and type of test. Um, so actually, yeah, so this picture here, I can use it to illustrate. You see that there are two constants here. So actually, these constants are not absolute constants, but constants only regarding this DSE block here. So let's say that the active search is done regardless, uh, sorry, not regardless, but regarding the position of the arm. Okay. And then we have a second one, because actually this search here for the position of, uh, of the limit of the equilibrium has to be performed at the same time for each load level and each um, test type. Actually, the other block here, the other TSC block, is providing all the discrete uh, combinations of both load and uh, test type. So horizontal, downhill, or uh, sideways. Yeah, that's the reason for having okay. two. Thank you. Uh, um, <clears throat> maybe a last one. Uh, <clears throat> What DSE functionality of uh, the uh, design space exploration block did you use? Um, to perform, oh, sorry, I don't have the, uh, the end of the, of the question. Um, ah, maybe uh, I, I, I'm not able to uh, Okay, so uh, since it clarify, says, but uh, maybe you, you well, can understand. I, I will try to figure. <laughs> since it yeah. says the functionality, uh, well, I will actually describe both. So, well, in this case, it was simple DOE because we want to build an approximation model, so we don't have a particular uh, active search. It's simply collecting points that will allow us to build a further approximation model. So, I assume regarding this one which is uh, adaptive doe and we have to set a specific uh, goal or target to satisfy this stability condition or to look for the points that satisfy the the, the limit state uh, so yeah in this case it's a simply constrained adaptive design we could also have used uh, contour functionality which is a uh, which is another uh, functionality of the adaptive design. Uh, the reason why we use const simply constraint here is that it allowed us to quickly set uh, some tolerances for what we consider as the as the zero force. So uh, yeah, but we could also have used constraint. Sorry, uh, contour, but here it allows us for uh, for quickly tuning the the values of that. Okay, I, I guess this answers. Yeah, 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 I guess that's uh, probably the, <laughs> uh, the 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 good uh, interpretation. Okay, so I uh, see any uh, new uh, question popping up. So uh, I suggest uh, you uh, guys to uh, to switch to uh, uh, next session. Thanks a lot, Thanks for your attention. 
Okay. Bye to all.